Okay, Boker Tov. Today's daf is Mem Hay 45. We are in the uh, penultimate uh, parak here, Kohen Yishpain. We're about the rabbinic shurot. When you in the Torahs, you take an oath and you don't pay. The rabbinic shurot, you take an oath and you do, and you and you are able to collect. Um, and we've gone through half the Mishnah. The entire Mishnah here is on the first uh, daf and a half or whatever. So the first set of cases was where there's some substantiating evidence that uh, some reason to believe that the person who's making the claim is actually telling the truth, a case about um, about somebody coming to collect their wages or somebody who broke into the house and claimed that he stole from him or somebody who was beaten up after leaving somebody um, and he takes an oath and he collects. Um, and Rabbi Yehuda says that actually, no, it has to start with a Torah oath of a motive benictus. The person has to have to admit to a part of it. And then we reverse it and we allow the person who's making the claim to take the oath and collect. So now we continue with this list. Very last line on Memdal and Amit Bet. Um, if the person opposite you, opposite the uh, the claimant, um, is uh, is suspect on making false oaths, so he's obligated to make an oath, but he's not believed to um, to make an oath, and therefore what we do is we allow me, the claimant, to make the oath and to collect. Kate said, what would be a, an example of somebody who is chashud? Um, so we know that somebody swore falsely in the past. Whether they swore falsely about a about knowing testimony, reminding us of the previous cases of shuot, or they swore falsely about watching a, an object, um, you know, about that they that whether they had taken an object into their, um, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, to, to, to watch, and then they deny that they had it. Vafilu um, shuot shav, even if it's not a shuot sheker, even if it's a shuot shav, like you, somebody swears that two plus two is four. You know, that a tree is made out of wood or something like that, right? So you could say, well, you know, that's not the same as lying through an oath. Apparently, though, it is treated the same. Somebody who does not take, I guess, invoking God's name with the appropriate so way. Uh that's a good question. Like when could you do chuva? How would we detect that you had done chuva? Um, you know, it's actually a very good question because the Gemara explicitly discusses how somebody who's who's um who has uh yeah, you know right? no who's chashud on 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 monetary issues like a butcher who has so crave <laughs> meat because of the profit and the way you're able to determine yeah. that the person has done chuva is because you see him in cases where no where he thinks nobody else is watching when you have to make sure you're not being tricked you know but you see how scrupulously honest he has become in business matters uh, it would be interesting to you know how would you detect somebody had done sufficient chuva by the uh, shvua that's a good question um, but anyway for your, what we're seeing here is if you're hushed on one you're hushed for all yes well, if once you're hushed, you're hushed. Yes, it's an excellent question. When can you like restore oh, your cut the confidence that people have in you? Um, but but yes, but it's but the but the initial move is once you are known to have sworn falsely, that's it. You're See, black interesting. I mean, again, like as you okay. pointed out, Shuvah Shav is is not technically false. Shuvah the is like is, the I know. Are a lot higher, I, I you know? understand. That's what the Kiddush. Maybe that has to do with the idea that it's about invoking God's name, and if you don't treat that with weight, you know. But it's true. It's different to invoke God's name on a lie than to invoke right. God's name, yeah. you know, for vain. Um, I understand that's the chiddush of the mission. Engineers who are now engineering cars so that when they're being inspected, they won't show that they've false they've uh, oh, yeah. wired it to uh, right. So it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's right. a modern parallel of this idea right. of when you're being watched. Do you know they've right. engineered it so you wouldn't know? They exactly. know when you're being watched. Right, right. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, let's say one of them, you know, the guy, meaning one of them, the, the claimant or the defendant, you know, anyway, was somebody that was a dice player or lent money with ribbis or somebody that chased pigeons, um, or sell, sold Shvi's products. All these are people that are sus. Are, are, are people that are puzzle, puzzle. That's different. Yes, right? correct. These are people that are cannot test are, are puzzle ages. Um, and can't testify because we're concerned about that they, you know, will will compromise. You know, they, they will violate for in for monetary gain. That's normally the explanation. Um, and then it would be saying that the question that the Gemara has throughout Shas is: Do we say Chasher Amamona, Chasher Ashuasa? So the simple read of this Mishnah is: These people are Chasher Amamona. They're willing to violate for you know for gain, violate prohibitions, and therefore they are suspect suspect for taking a false oath. Although there's an opinion in the Gemara that you don't say that, that somebody might steal, but stealing is not as weighty to somebody as invoking God's name in as a shu, and Chashir HaMamon is not Chashir HaShuasa, so presumably, I don't know, I would have to actually check, I have to say I did not check, but I would guess that they would read this Mishnah, that this is not just a case of Chashir. The Gemara basically describes these people as that this is their profession. 
right? So one explanation why these people are invalid as witnesses is number one, they're not oskim the Yeshua Shalom. They're not doing sort of like productive activity with their time, you know, they're, uh, um, and, um, and therefore, you know, they don't let, maybe live up to the same standards in society. Um, and even if you just focus on the issue about how much they violate for monetary matters, these are people that are regularly violating. It's his business to be, you know, to violate the prohibitions around Shvius in order to make money. You know, it's his business, you know, gambling, maybe it's some rabbinic prohibition. So those type of people are suspect. Somebody that is you know maybe is stealing or maybe once stole you know that's not that's a, that's a different type of a question yes I actually knew a Jew who was a professional poker player there you go okay um, also <laughs> Chasid Amamoto the normal Chasid Amamona so just got guys got for it just to contrast though the normal Chasid Amamona where there's a question if they're Chasid Ashkuasa is the question where if like you know, I, Michael is saying that he doesn't owe me, and I say he does, and I say take an oath. So we say, what good it's going to do if he's ready to steal from me? Then you know, um, then then why, then he'll be ready to take a false oath. And we say not necessarily, okay? But that's a case where we don't have evidence that he's stolen in the past, and certainly it's not this case where somebody is sort of regularly in the business. Okay, so now it goes on. Hayushneim chashudim. Now let's say both Michael was suspect and I was suspect. So I was supposed to now take the oath and collect. So Chazra Hashvulim Koma Diva Reb Yosi. Reb Yosi says the oath goes back to its place. So it sounds like it means it goes back to the one who should have taken it, Michael. And since Michael can't take it, he pays. That's a reasonable read of the Mishnah. But the Gemara is going to discuss what possible reads of that are. Rabbi Meir Amar Yachloka. Rabbi Meir says, no, neither of us can take it. So therefore, Michael pays half of what the claim was. Um, okay. Now, that's the case of Chashir al I'm sorry, wait, wait. So this is the case where, what, you're claiming you... You, know you owe me $100. You say, no, I only owe you uh, 50 let's say. You can't take the shul. We have to get out of it. You're exempt. Because, I can't because take... I'm motivated to mix up, so I should be taking a shul. You should be taking a shul. Chazor Oshua starts with a shul of right, Okay, your mother of nix us, there's an eight echad that you owe me 50, or your mother of nix us of 100, you admit to 50, and now you should be taking a shrewd right, so you owe me 50, but you, you're, you can't, you're not believed, so I'll take it and collect, but I'm not believed, so according to Rebbe Mayer, we split it. Nobody takes well, the oath and you pay me 25. Why are you just saying, other deals, but it's a Okay. you can't prove it, then why should I have to pay the rest of it? Because you're not obligated to make a shrewd, that you're not obligated, that you're not able to make. So if you can't make a shrewd, you have to pay, that's normally the rule. Okay, so... Now we continue. How about the storekeeper with his ledger? Here, look at my ledger. I wrote down that you owe me $200. I've been keeping your account, and this is the, the amount you owe me for the month. And the guy says, I don't know what you wrote down in your thing, but I never were visited your store. I only bought $100 worth of goods. Okay? So is that, so the, so the mission is saying that's not enough evidence. Um, you know, that's not enough substantiated claim that the storekeeper can take an oath and collect. Because the storekeeper, it can write whatever he wants in his notebook, right? And he can keep two notebooks, the one he shows the customers and then the fake one that he ups the prices in the back room, you know? So just because something is written in his notebook doesn't allow him to take an oath and collect, not his notebook, his ledger. Um, I go to the storekeeper, Michael, my neighborhood storekeeper, and I say, Michael, you know, give my son, my son is going to be coming by later. Give him, you know, give him 10 pounds of flour. Or um, Charlie there works for me, and uh, I owe him $10 for the day. And uh, just to make things easier, get let him buy $10 of grocery when he, groceries when he comes by. And when and, and then, you know, and then I'll pay you. I'll pay you back for you know for what you gave him the the, the ten pounds of flour you gave my son, or the ten dollars of grocery you gave Charlie. I'll pay you back later. But and he I, still read all that in his pinkas. Yeah, but that's not relevant. Okay, the pinkas is not sufficient. Who Omer Natat? Now we all agree to that. We all agree, and maybe there were even witnesses to that arrangement. Now who Omer Natat? Now Michael comes and says, Yeah, I get I get exactly what you said. Pay me up. And then my son and my workers come and say, no, we never took it. We never went to the store. Okay, so that's the issue. We all agree that that's sort of arrangement. And now two people are making claims against me. Let's ignore the son. I mean, unless I owe my son the money. But my worker is saying, where's my $10 in wages? I never went to, to the Makolet. And, you know, Michael is saying, where's the $10 you owe me? I paid Charlie. So... 
Who needs Pavanotto? They ain't needs Pavanotto. Michael gets to take an oath and collect because he says he paid, and my workers get to take an oath and collect, and I'm out double. Okay. Mm. Now, the logic of That's it is, is because crazy. for my workers, we certainly know that I owed them the money. We don't know that I paid them what I owed them. Okay, so that's sort of like a, so that already gives them a presumption, right? You know, and I'm not even claiming that I paid them. I'm only saying that 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 I arranged for Michael to pay them, okay? So I can't even counter their claim they haven't been paid with a definite claim. All I know is, all I have is Michael's claim that he paid them. So that's my workers, right? And as far as Michael, so maybe Michael's a slightly different because by Michael, yes, we know we made an arrangement, but I don't know that he's satisfied his end of the deal. So by Michael, maybe there's a little less of a basis for Michael to swear and collect. But anyway, by both of my workers and Michael, we know that I had some arrangement that would obligate me. Okay, so there's so, so the Chum say to have both. Oh, sorry, of those and why can't so why can't you take an oath that you didn't pay me? No, you're not. We're agreeing. I haven't paid you yet. Okay, but you're saying you gave them the oh. food, and 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 they're saying they didn't collect. No, it. but but if I'm supposed to, but I'm supposed to give them the food. You're supposed to pay me, right? Yeah, because but but okay, so only you only have your claim that you gave them the food. Okay, so Amar ben Nanis, Kate said Elu Beilu by Midesh was shot. How can both sides come to a false oath? First of all, it's not both sides. It means because both sides swear, Somebody. one of them is definitely swearing false. It's also interesting he says she was shove. He really should be saying she was sheker. Okay. Maybe he means that if you demand that both of them are taking an oath, I mean, whatever. Ella, who knows those shall be sure they ain't nothing shall be sure. Okay. But rather, they all collect without taking an oath. Now, that's a, wow, that's like big, you know. So so I'm really out. I don't even get an <coughs> oath to satisfy my, my, my demand that I'm not obligated. Now, the run Girsa, which I actually think makes a little bit more sense, is who no tell be shvua, the hain no tell shalo be shvua. The workers don't have to take a note because we know I owed my workers. We don't know that I paid them. As far as Michael is concerned, that's a different story. We know there was a deal, but we don't know for sure that he actually fulfilled his end of it. So Michael will still have to make an oath, and my workers don't. Okay, and then as long as only one of them is making an oath, we don't know there's a definite Swiss check there here. So when, uh, okay, so yeah. the way, I'm really in Pinchas, I forget the workers for a minute. Let's say it's just a matter of like, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, I've been keeping You say I haven't paid my debt. Yeah. And and I then, say then, either I did pay, pay it or or you upped the price and that was not how much I owed. Right, so, so what happened? You don't have right. That's why you might want to get me to sign when I actually, you know, uh, take ten dollars on credit. You would take out your notebook and have me sign opposite the ten dollars, right, or something like that. Okay, Amalekhanvani, tamely but now. Let's say Amalekhanvani, tamely but in our payroll. Let's say a slightly different case. I go to the Michael there and I say, Michael, give, you know, here, give, you know, give me, uh, give, give, give me fruit here for twenty bucks. Okay, give me uh, twenty dollars worth of oranges. The Nelson low, um, and so now we know that Michael gave me the uh, two crates of oranges. Amar low, tain the oto dinars. We're all agreeing to this. Amar low, tain the oto dinars. So Michael says, so where's my twenty bucks? Amar low, nasati vlucha. What do you mean? I already paid you. Okay, you put it in your nasato be unpli. You already put it in your cash register. I mean, Rashi says unpli is a uh, you know what do you call it? It's a place where, where the storekeeper keeps his money. Okay, so you shove a balabayish and atan lo et dinar. So I take an oath that I gave the dinar, meaning this is not the case of Nishbain Venotlin. This is a Motsi Mechaber Olav Haraya. Michael wants to say I owe him twenty dollars, and I say I don't. So, so normally I would be normally I would be kofar call. I wouldn't even take an oath. The chiddush here is is that I do take an oath because again there is some good circumstantial evidence. Okay, so on the one hand I I get off from paying, but I still have to take an oath. Now Rashi says a little imprecisely. Rashi mm -hmm. says. Um, what does Rashi say? Yeshava Balabai, if you look at Rashi four lines from the top, Shvuas sure. Heset. Now that's actually imprecise because as Tosos points out here in multiple places, Shvuas Heset was only a statement of Rav Nachman. And, Shur, and Tosos explicitly says Rav Nachman is not making a claim that there was always a Shvuas Heset. Rav Nachman instituted the idea of Shvuas Heset. You might remember Shvuas Heset is like a pretty regular Shvuah we throw around, you know, even when there's not enough substantiating evidence or anything, but just to sort of say you don't get off by just making a claim. You have to make a Shvuah. So it does not seem that this is a shuas essay. It's like a shuas essay. A classic shuas essay is I go up to Michael out on the street. I say, Michael, you owe me hundred dollars. He says, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. So there maybe that's a shuas essay. Okay. Whereas here there's really substantiating circumstances. So this isn't, this is a rabbinic shua, but it's not like the other one. It's not a nishpa v'notel. It's a nishpa v'nifter. Michael takes an oath and he gets off. Okay. Because it's still, it's not enough substantiating. It's still basically but there's enough of a question that 
that at least um, that at least uh, wait who, who's the chenvani? Oh, <laughs> you're uh, the chenvani. Okay. I take the oath and I get off. Okay, so anyway, but so okay. the hesed is would be you know if I'm a kol for hakol, but if I say like I never met you before, then then I wouldn't. Well, that's the question about do you need by even by hesed? There's a question if you need draw the ramona, but that's but that but that's with a lower level of substantiating circumstances. Okay, here because of the circumstances. On the, on the one, you know, it's quite likely that I paid the 20 bucks, so we're not we're not going to give Michael the right to swear and collect, but I don't get the right to just walk away. I have to take an oath that I already paid the 20 bucks. Okay, that's that. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Kol shaperes biyado, yado al ha'el yonah. If I have the... the, the yeah, I think great, you scared. You show about the... Uh, you show, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, thank I'm you. You show about the bias. Fine. So I swear that, that I paid you the 20 bucks and I walk away and I don't pay. And I don't pay. I'm a low. Tame me as I pay road. Now, let's say um, I, I gave Michael the $20, and Amarlo, I already gave you the crates of oranges, and you already put, you know, uh, brought what them home. Okay, what do you mean I didn't give you the oranges? So you shavach, so that's again, I demand oranges for Michael, he denies them, he's a kofer hakol, so normally we would say just walk away, but again, because of the, we all admit to the transaction, and there's just a question if it had been satisfied or not, so he doesn't get to just walk away. You shavach and vani, he has to take an Oath. So that's the, basically the rule is it's a, it, it, that Hamotimi the one who is coming to extract the money or the fruit has to you know has to bring a proof. So meaning meaning the person who's being who's defending himself is is exempt because it's not sufficient proof against him, but he does have to make an oath. Okay. Let Yehudo Mir Kosha Paris Biado Yado Al Hal Yona. Whoever has the fruit. He has the upper hand. And what the Gemara is going to say this means is that it's going back to the first case, which is the case where um, Michael gave me the crates of oranges and says, I haven't paid the $20. So in that case, we said, I take an oath that I paid it and I walked away. And I walk away. And Rabbi Huda says, I don't even have to take an oath because normally you don't get to have, take the oranges home until you've paid the money. That would be very unusual that I would actually have the oranges in my possessions and not yet have paid the storekeeper the money. The standard way it works is you pay the money, right? And then you know, it's like you think at the supermarket, right? I mean, sure, you know, they're going down the aisle, they're being put into your cart, but until you actually hand the money, you don't sort of start rolling away your cart, okay? So since I already have the oranges in my possessions, that's pretty darn good. Well, a lot of stores also do things on credit. Right, okay, so Rashi actually, I think, says that we're explicitly talking about a case that a person doesn't do it on credit, okay? I think Rashi says it explicitly here somewhere. But anyway, but you're right, I mean, that might change things. So Rabbi Huda is always saying is that if I took the oranges home, we can assume I paid the 20 bucks, yes, and I don't even... Shane, Shane, Right, right. So Rashi says that we don't do credit at this store. So then Reb Yehuda says we can presume that I already paid the money and I don't even have to take an oath. But, but it would be different. Yeah, this is exactly. Okay. I'm a little Now, let's say we're not dealing with a storekeeper. We're dealing with a money changer. Um, Here, for this dinare, give me, please, you know, break it up into smaller coins. Venus um, low. And now I have my smaller coins, and I'm alone. Take me the dinar. So now give me the dinar. I'm alone. What do you mean? I already paid you. And Asata Bumbali, you put it in your cash register. So once again, um, he's demanding it from me. I'm denying it. It's a kofar call. Normally I would walk away, but here I have to take an oath. You shove a balabai. I take an oath that I gave him the dinar. Nasan lo is a dinar. Now let's say I gave him the dinar. I'm alone. Take me a tama. Oh, now give me my change. I'm alone. Asata Bumbali, I already gave you a change. You slack a little tochisecha. You put it into your wallet. So then I'm demanding from the Michael, the money changer. I'm demanding from him, you know, the change. Um, and he's claiming that he gives, so he's a kofar hakol. He should walk away, but because of the circumstances, he has to take an oath first. Yishava Shulchani. Rabbi Yudah Omer, now Rabbi says, again, similar issue, going back to the, the first case of these two. The, the money changer does not give out singles until he takes the 20. So if I got all of my singles, and then Michael says, where's the 20 bucks? And I, and I say, I paid it, so the you say, okay, I have to take a shrua. The Buddha says, you don't have to take a shrua. Michael never would have given you the singles if you had not first given him the $20 bill. Okay. Reading this Mishnah, um, you know, I can't help thinking about the cases where I'm sure this has happened to all of us. You know, you give $20 at the cash register and then they make change and they think you only gave them a $10 bill, you know? Mm -hmm. So these types of issues come up, which is why some people are very mocked, but you know, that they put the dot modern money like on top, but you know, they didn't put it into the drawer before they make the change. You know, I actually sometimes I even say, because sometimes what I do to make things easy is like, you know, it's like,
like I'll give like an extra 20 so and you know with change and they don't have to give me ten dollars not like nine singles or whatever it is so I'll say I'm giving you a twenty dollar bill you know but these things happen right so people can uh, so that you understand how even in even in good faith these things can happen which is another interesting question right anyway okay um Amru now so that was a digression that what I'm not a digression those were other cases of a rabbinic oath but a nishba v'niftar an oath that you're exempt not the place that we opened with a nishba hotel. it normally would have been a mode of the mixus but because of the circumstances we say you take the oath you still have to take an oath now we're really going to deal with yet another type of a rabbinic oath and we're going to it's sort of like the, 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 the structure now is going to be it's a little confusing because these are broken up into different mishnayot in the mishnah mm -hmm. you know they seem to be changing themes because they are are changing themes. These are different Mishnayot. Anyway, the next one is going to say the same way the rabbis instituted a Shavua in case A, B, C, D, and E, they instituted it in case F. But we've never mentioned A, B, C, and D, and E yet. So, okay, we're going to now list a whole set of cases where the rabbis instituted a Shavua. Um, Shamu, just like they said, that if a woman is coming to collect her ketuvah, like she's divorced, the husband owes her 200 zoos and maybe a lot of other stuff that she brought into the marriage, okay? And the husband says, I've already paid it fully up. And she says, no, you paid up like $20 of it or $100 of it, but not the rest. So once she admits that part of it has been paid, it raises questions about, oh, so maybe all of it has been paid. Right. I mean, you know, you don't have a receipt that he paid on. I mean, he doesn't, you know, uh, what, what would it be? He, uh, true, he doesn't have a receipt to the hundred, but you're admitting that he paid the hundred. So, and when you're still holding the ksuva, even though he paid the hundred. So once part of it has been paid, maybe all of it has been paid. So therefore, if once she admits that, she has to take an oath that the rest has not been paid. Okay, so that's a case of, I guess, Nishba Notel, but where it's a little bit more, like he really does have evidence that it, the money is owed to her, so it's not like the other cases, is it, it was more of a question whether the money was owed. Here, we knew we know the money was owed, and she's holding on to the star, but because of the questions that were raised, we ask her, to, she takes her shrua first. Is it <laughs> No, so I was waiting for, for that. She's not a motive of us because motive of us is, I say you owe me money, and you concede to part of the debt. Here, I say you, I concede that you don't owe me, the man demanding the money concedes to part, not the one from whom it's being demanded. If I say you owe me $100, you say, no, I only owe you 50, that's what it makes sense. Oh, okay. If I say you owe me $100 and, and, and you say, I, you know, I've already pay, paid it all, you're a co for co. I say, no, you paid $10. You're not a motive mix us. I am partially admitting that the debt, the full debt is not outstanding. It's a confusing, but that's correct. Okay. Um, but this is a case where it's just a one shot deal, not like you know, a case where it's like a monthly, this is she gets a monthly stipend. Right, right. That, no, there's no monthly stipend. I mean, she can live off the estate, yeah. but that's a different story. The she parua. How about if one witness testifies that the ksuv has been paid up? Okay, so that also normally it's one against two. The star is worth two witnesses, but nevertheless, I have to take a shvua against the eidecha. Okay, which is similar. Now both of these are structurally similar to shvua deoraita. Right, the first one is structurally similar to motive mixtas. It's not the defendant who's making a motive mixtas; it's the claimant. Okay, that's and this is structurally similar to eidecha. But a normal eidecha is an eidecha say I owe money and I deny I owe money. Here an eidecha says that my debt has been paid and I actually have a star that wins over an eidecha. But nevertheless, I make a shvur against the eidecha. So, so are we are we going to say kashin shem with this? Then yes, yes, that, correct. That's what I said. That. Yes, yes. So we're going to get to the so to that. Yes. Okay. Minuchot now. Look here, fellow bishur. Now. Um, here's another thing we said elsewhere. I mean, not we haven't seen it elsewhere, but the Mishnah is saying these are these are other things that are said elsewhere in the Mishnah in the Tanaitic literature in the Mishnah Yot, these different cases of oaths. So this other one is I'm coming to collect from property that has liens on it. Okay, I go to Charlie, I have uh, Charlie owe me a thousand dollars. Gloria has liens on pro on Charlie's property. So Charlie doesn't even say, You're right, though, I owe you the money, take my property. But Gloria's not happy because glory was hoping to collect that property and she thinks i'm making it all up and maybe i am making it all up as a way to swindle gloria out of the property that she's got liens on and i got a deal going on with charlie so since gloria there is a interested party okay so and but my my uh but i'm taking the property from 
Charlie there. So what is so what are we doing to protect the Gloria's interests? So I have to take a shua. Okay, so Minichasim Yeshubadi, if it's property that has a lien on it, Yisomim. Or similarly, let's say I'm going to collect well, not exactly similarly, I'm going to collect from heirs, somebody whose you know father or mother passed away and they inherited an estate, and I show that their father owed me money. Okay, they might not know enough to defend themselves against my claim. So therefore, I have to take an oath that the debt is still outstanding, even if I produce a star. Okay, in all these cases, it's even if I produce like a star. Okay, let's say a case where I'm coming to collect from Charlie's property, but Charlie isn't around. Charlie's off in Hawaii or he's out at some, you know, he's at some uh, sort of retreat where they don't get cell phone, uh, you know, reception. Okay, so how the heck am I going to, so we can't get a hold of him. Okay, so ba- what is Basin going to do? They might try to defend him in his absence, but also to protect his interests, they say, um, I have to an oath. It's sort of like the case of the heirs. The father isn't around. You know, he's dead. So the same way we said all those cases, you have to take an oath. Similarly, this is the Chiddush of our Mishnah. When orphans come to collect, or heirs, you know, they they basically say, look, you know, our father died. Here are all, you know, he was in, he was a, he did a lot of business deals. Here's the thing, you know, that shows that you owe us a thousand dollars, a star in our father's files. Okay. And the point is, if you want to collect a thousand dollars, even though you've got a star, you have to take an oath. Why? Well, I mean, well, they have a star. Right. Who was, like, the the heirs want to collect. to collect from somebody else, uh, that money that was owed to their father. And they even have a star. Why do they have to take an oath? So let's see what the oath is. They should really should have been Kenei, not Vichy. Whatever. That's the would have been part of the list. That, that is correct. These are adults, right? They, they, yeah, yes, the adults. Well, let's assume. So here's the oath. Pakadnu Abba, Velo Amarlanu Abba, Shalom Matsinu, Bein Shtorosav, Shal Abba, Shishtarza Parua. They have to say, our father never told us that this debt, we take an oath that our, not that our father told us the money was still outstanding. The father on his deathbed is not going to go through every single debt that's owed to him and tell them that the money is still outstanding. But he never told us the opposite. He never said, <laughs> don't collect, you know, it's true that I have Reuven's star in my files, but he actually paid it up. I haven't gotten around to returning the star. That star is already paid up. Okay, so they have to take a note that he never said anything like that. And also, when we were going through the files, you know, maybe the, you know, maybe there was Ruben's star and clipped onto it with a paper clip was a note that said this star has been paid up. So I have to take an oath, right, that that star, I never found any you paperwork. You shouldn't have a star. Then, I, okay, I circumstances you, happen. He was around, whatever the reason was. Okay, I'm holding it on because we have some side deal going. Okay. Anyway, so I have to take an oath that I never got direction, you know, instruction and never found any documents that would indicate that this is not, that, that this debt has been paid up. Um, okay. Even if the son is born after the father dies, he has to take an oath. And now, what would you have thought? Maybe you would have thought that since there was never a possibility that he knew his father's business dealings, of course he doesn't know that his father told him that it was paid up. He was born afterwards. But on the other hand, if the issue is that maybe he found paperwork, of course, it doesn't matter if he was born after his father died. He still has access to his father's paperwork, and maybe he has to take an oath that there's no paperwork that it was paid up. Okay, anyway, we'll see about that in the Gemara. Um, let's say there are witnesses that when the father was on his deathbed, he said, Ruben still owes me a thousand dollars. He has never paid me one red cent. Make sure you collect that money. Sort of like David on his deathbed there. Make sure you, get, you know, yeah. you settle all my deals. Okay. Then who note shall be Then he doesn't have to make an oath because then we know that the father said that it was not paid up. The Ilunishbain Shalobatan, the following people take an oath, even if a claim wasn't made against them. Now the Gemara says what? How, why would a person take an oath if the other side isn't even demanding any money or making a claim? So the Gemara says what it means is you don't make a claim of a vada, you can make of a bari, you make a claim of a shema, you know, and here's the scenario. Hashutfin, okay, I'm in uh, business dealings here with Michael, and I think maybe he's been cooking the books or, you know, gr- you know, skimming off of the top. Do I know for sure? No. So that means shalobatana. I'm not saying, Michael, I know for sure that you've been skimming off the top, but I say, I suspect you might be, take an oath to me. So if a, if a shutaf can demand a, an oath from his fellow shutaf, 
Okay, that's so you know you might be swearing every other day, so then you probably have yeah. to dissolve the shuk fist if you start. if trust is lost, you might have to dissolve the shuk fist. It is just okay. that I should shoot a food. No, here's the list: no. a shutin va resin, a sharecropper. Okay, Michael's my sharecropper, and I think that he's not being honest about how much we you know we really have taken in. Uh, va petrofin, and somebody who is this is not an apitropus for orphans. This is just somebody who basically has like power of attorney, my you know, or my investment banker. The isha noses for no senes betocha bayit, or the a woman who basically has like rule over business. the house's finances or the or the business she's running the store, but it's her husband's money. Okay, and the husband thinks that she's been skimming off the top. The chain uben habayit, and similarly, somebody who is also like a you know um, ben habayit is a one of the brothers. Uh, the, they inherited an estate, and one of the brothers is the one that's managing the affairs of the estate. And they say, wait, you got to take a note to us that you know you've been totally honest with everything, and that these books are accurate, etc. Okay, amalo mata toanini ritzoni shetish poli. Uh, so, so let's say the brother says back, what are you exactly suspecting me of? Like, tell me specifically. Like, I showed you all of the accounts. Tell me specifically what you're suspecting me of. Uh, and the guy says, I don't know. But Ritsoni Shetishpali, I don't know specifically what I suspect you of. I still want you to just take an oath that you have been completely honest with everything. Chai, he still has to take the oath. So even if there's nothing concrete that's being suspected, right, it's just like, just, I don't know, but just swear that you've been completely honest with everything. Uh, now, now, once the arrangement has dissolved, the partners have gone their ways, the sharecroppers, you know, year, year is over. So after Michael and I dissolved our shukfis, I can't come to him after it's dissolved and say, take an oath to me about, uh, about because I suspect something happened two years ago while we were still partners. Wait, can you do a Google shua? Yes. Oh, next line. I can get Michael to make a shua from some other bait from some other like the last payment of our current right. partnership <laughs> exactly. for the past two years right what like the last payment like let's say you know we're about to dissolve it yeah that would be an example to swear for everything up until that point that's right? yes but, but yes fine but mm -hmm. once i can get him to swear about something then i can get him to swear about a partnership that's in the past but once the partnership is in the past i cannot swear on the basis of this arrangement if Shmita passes and Michael owes me a shua, I said, Michael, you owe me a hundred dollars. He's admitted to 50. There was a question about the other 50. He had to make a shua and then it was Shmita. So if he really did owe me the 50, he would no longer own it because of Shmi owe it because of Shmita. But he didn't owe me the 50. He owed me a shua about the 50. Okay. Uh, Shmita also exempts him from making that shua. It is not just, this is everything, not just the partnership. Right? No, no, no. This is not going about the partnership at all. This is a completely separate mission. Okay, that's why it's confusing. You need these broken up at the last mission. Hashvi is, is like a completely separate point. Okay, let's take a look at the Gemara. There's, there's a parallel between a Sota and the previous case. About, it's almost like jealousy when he doesn't have a reason why he wants the oath. He's just demanding. Right. Just, uh, yeah, suspicious, suspicious. That, that's true. Except here, you here, you you know, we do know that people that have you know often do you know cheat and skim and whatever. So, right. but it's a good point. I mean, it's like it's just same, right, same, but it's just it's just non-specific suspicions. Right. That's true. It's a good interesting parallel. Okay, call on each the Gemara. where do you know that? The basic concept in the Torah is that you take an oath and get off of it. So rather than just looking at the three cases and seeing that's the case, we say the Amakra Vilakhta Allah below you shalane. That it says, you know, Shwata Shemtiya Bain Shnehem in the case of Shomrim, and it says the owner takes and the guy doesn't pay. So the takes here is conceptually, he takes the shvua, which is an interesting way of thinking about the shvua. It's not just a way of backing up my claim. It's like, this is the payment I owe you. I owe you a shvua. That's sort of like the last line. Shvi is annuls the debt of the shvua. But anyway, Mishalav l'shalim lo shvua. The one who has to make, who would otherwise pay, instead of paying, he makes the oath. And then he doesn't pay. Okay, so that's the Torah. These are the rabbinic cases of making a shua. Why did the rabbis establish that a um, that a uh, you know a uh, hired hand employee makes an oath when he says I paid and I said and uh, he says I haven't paid him yet and I say I did? That he takes an oath and collects his, his, his you know his daily wages. Yeah, this is a big chiddush. This whole thing, big halachot. So the Gemara, of course, dissects every word here, the two words, halachot kedolot. Halachot? 
What do you mean halachos? Hani hilchos aninu. The word halachot often means halach lemoshe misinai. These are rabbinic institutions. This isn't some like halach lemoshe misinai. Ele matakanot kedolot shano kan. Fine. A big, you know, edicts they made here to allow the uh, workers to, co- to collect. So Gemara says kedolos michal di kaktanos. What do you mean? These are big. Others are small edicts. So <laughs> would you let me get out? What I'm like to say. Anyway, Ella Amar Rabbi Nachman Amar Shmuel to kanot. Kivuot Shanukan, like established takanot. So again, like we never even said, so what are you trying to make? But anyway, the real point is, yes, it's a big deal what they did here. Meaning that you normally might think that there's not sufficient basis to make a shua. Michael says, I owe him my wages. I say it paid. It's a ko for hakol. Why should we let him take an oath and collect? That goes against all our principles of raya. This is a big deal. We made a big thing here. We we, we made a and, and why did we do it? So let's take a look. Akrura Bunalishwa if they took the shua away from me. Now it's interesting. I really don't have a shua. I'm a ko for hakol. Michael says I owe my wages. I say I paid. So Tosa says that's true, and this is before uh, Shua's Hesse, but we saw later in the Mishnah cases, like with the storekeeper or whatever, where they're, when they're substantiating reasons, conceptually, right, there would be cases where even if I'm a Kofar call, I would have to make a Shua, but in substanti- in, you know, in cases where there's some circumstances that give weight to it, at least a rabbinic Shua. But even so, that would be following the Torah model. If um, I said I paid the wages and I took an oath and I'd be exempt from paying, that would be following the Torah's model that I take an oath and I walk away. And the big chiddush is that we completely introduced a new model where Michael can take the oath and collect his money. Okay, so Akrura Rabbanan, um, they took it off of me, but Shadu Asachir, and they put it on the, and they put it on the, the, uh, the, the worker, and he gets to take the oath and collect. Mishum, now why did they do this? Kidechayev, because poor Michael's got to make a living. He doesn't want to go around and have everybody cheat him out. Says Gemara says, "Mishum today chayiv the chas esachir can see nanle the bala bias." So what? It's all very nice, you know. You're a social progressive or whatever it is. You say we got to, uh, you know, defend the workers. But why is it the bala? Why, why is that fair to the owner? Maybe he really pays his workers, and now his workers are all going to swear falsely and collect. Like you know, it's very nice you're concerned for him, but be concerned for the employer. So Gemara says, "No bala bias kufa nichleiting yishtab esachir v'shakil." The bala bias likes this rule. Okay, because he knows that there will be disputes, and it actually works in his benefit to have the workers take an oath. Why does that work in his benefit? Because if he was the one taking the oath all the time, and then the word would get around that he doesn't pay his workers, he swears falsely, and uh, and nobody would want to work for him. So it's better that in his, to, for him to get workers that everybody understands that he will always pay out his money. And if there's any dispute, um, as long as you take an oath, he will pay you. So then the workers feel confident that they can get, get their money and he won't have a hard time getting workers. Of course, the Gemara says, Ad Raba, say the opposite. The worker would rather that the owner take the oath Vinafka and and then and get out of paying. In order that in order that other other employers should hire him. Word is going to get around that this worker is always, you know, that's why it's hard to like complain at work if there's cases about like, you know, I mean, this whole thing, the whole Me Too movement, you know, about women, like everybody, you know, you're afraid to say anything because then you get a bad rep and nobody wants to hire you, even if you're totally in the right. So this this worker gets a rep that he takes a shrew and he's collecting and the employer says he paid him and nobody <laughs> wants to hire such a worker. So he'd rather the owner take the oath, at least is what the way the commercial is claiming it. Anyway, any argument you can make for one side, you can make for the other. So the Gemara said, um, no, Balabayas al Korche Agar. So no, the owner, that, that's, not, that's not an issue. He can't say, I, I, want, I, you know, I don't want to get blacklisted by employers. Employers need workers. They're definitely going to hire you. But so what do you mean? Um, uh, so Sakhir Nami al Korche Mitka. So don't, so, you know, so if that's true, you say that the, uh, so, so, uh, um, so say that workers, you know, definitely have to be. So when I was saying that, like, I'm, I as the owner won't get any workers if I get a bad rep as an employer. No, workers have to, have to, have to seek employment. Right, everybody, I need to hire workers, they need to seek employment. That's not a saying like one side has a stronger position than the other. Elabal, it's so fine. Forget all of that. Forget our social engineering. Okay, we can't come up with a good explanation why social engineering or whatever, economic, whatever, makes sense to give the right to the uh, to the worker. So really, it has to do with evidence or where the greater likelihood is of who's telling the truth. Okay, Ella, Balabai is tarred before, love who. 
fine. It's more likely that the that the worker is telling the truth because the owner, he's got a million workers and therefore he might not remember at one particular one. The guy who says he hasn't been paid, he only has one worker he's concerned about, which is himself, okay? So it's much more likely that the that the that the employer doesn't, you know, got that you know, you know is uh um got it confused. Carbifolo. Now Tosa says that even if I only hired one worker, Okay, um, let's say like my, Michael is mowing my lawn and that's it. That's all we're talking about. I don't have a big business. Nevertheless, he quotes you show me that says, yeah, but I got a lot of other things on my mind. You're mowing my lawn. My kids want to go to Disneyland. I got to buy the groceries. I got to do this. You only have one thing on your mind, which is getting paid. Okay, so even if I have only one worker, it's more likely that I forgot that I paid him than he forgot that he actually collected. Okay, but that's assuming that people are making honest mistakes. People aren't consciously lying, right? Well, this whole okay. system fails if people are going to consciously Well, there's lying and then they're swearing falsely. Yeah. Okay, the lacy way blow shua. So if that's the mo if it's if such a greater likelihood that Michael is telling the truth, why don't I just pay him without taking an oath? Okay, now Tosa says it's a likelihood. Now it's likely, and I, I'm saying right, I paid exactly. him. So Tosa is saying, okay, but what it sounds like is is that the rabbis are saying we're so certain that I am distracted that even when I say I definitely paid Michael, it really means maybe I paid him, maybe I didn't. So we know I owed the Michael money. Michael is saying that it's still owed to him. I'm saying if I if I were to say I don't know if I paid him, he would collect without an oath. So even though I'm saying I know I paid him, okay, if we're going to interpret that as you think you know but you don't, and you really so are. When do we take Shema, interpret Bari as being a Shema? What? Do we see this elsewhere? No, Bari? but this is but here we're saying if we suspect that the person is very likely to think he did when he didn't, at least that's the Hava mean at the Gemara, then just pay him even without an oath. So the Gemara says, oh, you want to keep the workers honest too a little bit. Well, right. So, but it's interesting. The answer of the Gemara is The answer isn't like we're not a hundred percent sure. There are cases where Michael's lying also, which is what I would say. You know, keep the workers honest. You know, and the owner still is claiming he knows for sure. It more is like saying like, you know, just do it to placate the owner. We really do believe that Michael's owed the money, and that's why you're paying out. But the owner is going to be upset. He's yelling and screaming. I paid him. So to placate him, make the sure. But it's interesting; it's framed that way, and not framed as a in order to really be more confident that the money is owed. Okay. So now the Gemara says, "Lacy way to aid him. Why don't we just establish that when I pay my workers, I have to have witnesses? And if I can't produce the witnesses that I paid him, then um, then Michael can still make a claim against me." So the Gemara says. Uh, no, trichale milsa. That's too much of a pain in the neck. That type of a system to demand that there be witnesses is not going to work. Okay, the way Steve Lay made Kara. So why don't I pay Michael up front? Okay, and that when I'm not distracted, when we're making the deal, if I pay him up front and I'm not distracted, that'll eliminate these types of, of misunderstandings. So it says, Shneim Rotsim Bahakafa. Both of us want want to pay Michael later. I want to pay Michael later because I don't always have the cash on hand. Also, I would say I want to pay Michael later because I don't want him to take the cash and then not do a good job or then leave. Michael, why does Michael want to be paid later? Michael wants to be paid later because he doesn't want to have to worry about the cash. You know, he only need, wants the cash when he's ready to go home and use it. Like maybe he's afraid that if he has it in his pocket, it'll fall out. Maybe he's afraid that if he has it in his pocket, he will like, uh, you know, he'll get into some, you know, he'll, you know, somebody will try to, you know, uh, whatever, swindle it from him. So he would rather just have the cash when he's ready to go home. Ihachi says, Gemara, Filu Katsatsunami. If that's true, then even if we're debating what was the original uh, contract for, because it's like the fixing of the wages. So what if there's a debate of fixing of the wages? Is that another case where Michael takes an oath? And there the actual halacha is, if Michael says I agreed to give him 20 bucks to mow the lawn, and I say only 10, okay, then, I, then he doesn't take an oath, he doesn't collect. Why don't we say similarly there, I'm distracted and Michael gets to take an oath? So Allah Matanya, why do we teach in Abrasa? Right, the Uman Amashtaim Katsatstali. The Uman, the craftsman, or whatever, in this case, the lawnmower says, You told me you'd give me 20 bucks. The hello, Mir Lokatatil Khailachas, I only told you 10 bucks. Okay? Amotsim Khabero Lava Raya. So you're coming now, of course. If you're a riot, you're not a motive of us. Let's say I actually paid Michael the ten dollars, and then Michael said, "Where's the other ten dollars you owe me?" And I say, "I don't owe it to you." Okay. So anyway, so then So why doesn't Michael get to take the oath and collect? So the Gemara says, "No, no, no." People remember how much they agreed on. 
right? If we agree, how much, well, you know, how much should we agree for your daily wages? Yahi says the Gemara, a few others manonami. Okay. So now, by the way, through asking these questions, we're introducing new halachot in this whole framework. So one halacha is that when they're debating what the wages were set, okay, then the the worker does not get to take an oath. Another place the worker does not get to take the oath is, is that if the time period of him being paid has passed, if Michael worked during the day, I have the whole night to pay him. If it's the next morning already, I transgress the prohibition of lo talim pulat zahir. Do not allow the, the wages, the daily wages of the hired hand to sleep over by you overnight. If he works for you in the day, you have to pay him during the night before daybreak. Now, let's say it's already daybreak. And Michael comes and says that you owe me the money, and I say I already paid him. So there, he does not get to take an oath. Part of the reason you could imagine is, is because then I would, it's presume, we're not going to presume that I did the sin of not paying him his wages in his right time. I usually will be careful about that. So once it's already after the time of payment, okay, he can no longer be believed. So the mm -hmm. says, but why is that true? If the point is that I am distracted, and I think I paid him when I didn't, Okay, then I that will be true even after the nightfall. You know, I will think I paid him during the day, and I won't be running after him to pay him at night. And uh, but I'm all mistaken because I'm distracted. Alama Tanya, why do we teach in a bright up? Others manavlo If the time of payment has passed, and I and and I haven't paid him, um, or he says I haven't paid him, Hareza ain't an ishba v'notel. Michael cannot take an oath. Chazaka ain't balabai is over baltali. I certainly would not transgress letting his wages sleep by me. But the Gemara is saying, I don't get it. I think I paid him. So if I think I paid him during the day that he was working, I won't, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think the same thing and I won't look at him at night for night and we'll still have the same issue. My distraction made me think I paid him. So the Gemara says, Marta Balabai's tar Didn't you say that he was distracted with his workers? So the Gemara says, no, no, no. You're only distracted before, like, the time of payment has come, like before, you know, it gets to be nightfall and when you're really obligated to pay your workers, okay? Once that time has come, then you really focus and you make yourself remember. Okay, now, here's a very important point. Tosa says, wait, so here's the scenario. If Michael comes to me, let's say the day is over at 6 p.m., at 5 p.m., and says, pay me, and I say, I paid you, that's because I'm distracted and whatever, and I won't remember. But if he comes to me tomorrow morning, then I'm then we'll say, no, then at nightfall, I will stop and think, wait, 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 let me make sure that I paid everybody, okay? And I'll, I'll wait, did I pay Michael? No, I didn't pay Michael, I'll go find him. So, so then, so wait, that's what, what about between six in the morning? Wait, wait, wait. So we'll hold on, hold on. So that's why when he comes to me in the morning, we'll assume that I definitely did remember and pay him, and I'm not making a mistake. So it says, I don't get it. So here's a perfect solution. Michael comes to me at five p.m. and says, "Pay me." Let's not have Michael make a shua. Let's just wait over, wait through the night. And then I'll start, and then because I don't want to be over on Baltali, and once it gets to be night, I'll force myself to remember, and if really my, I do owe Michael the money, I'll find him and I'll pay him. If that's what we'll normally assume, that why I won't make a shua the next morning, then we should assume that even when Michael demanded from the money from me at 5 p.m., let's just wait till nightfall, and then Dove will force himself to remember. So Tosa has a very good psychological explanation. He'll say, once I denied it to Michael at 5 p.m., I'm going to be defensive and like find reasons to reinforce, mm -hmm. you know, and not push myself. To, if I haven't claimed at 5 p.m. I paid you, then, and it comes nightfall and I don't want to be over on Balkalin, then I'm really going to be rigorous and try to identify, wait, I don't think I paid Michael, I better go pay him. But when he's coming during the day and I'm distracted, whatever, says, don't bother me, I paid you already. And then when it comes nightfall, I already said I paid him in the day, so I'm not going to think I paid him once it gets to be the night. Very, very good, very good, you know, insight there. I'm so sorry. that's why that's when right. Michael so demands that he need the money of the day, he's allowed to make a shvua even, even if he comes two days from now. Once he, the, the, once the initial claim was made during the time itself. But if the initial claim was after nightfall and after the next morning. And then he says, I still haven't paid him. Then we don't believe him. We believe me. We believe if there was no claim before that, I would never have gone ahead and let night and night pass without paying. Okay. So let's just finish. Sorry, wait, meaning I'm demanding it anywhere between 6 p.m. in the morning. 
No, 6 p.m. in the morning is not over his mind. That's Tov's mind. That's when you right. know. Right. Then, 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 then I'm believed. Then you're believed. Right. That's right. 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 Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 5 p.m. Right. Even like sometime in the night. But, yeah, but that's right. Yeah. Yeah. For that is correct. Okay. So the Gemara says, Vikis, so. So, so what do you mean? You say that if he comes to me the next morning, I'm going to be so careful. I don't want to be over on Baltoli, and I definitely would have paid him. But if he's lying, he doesn't want you know, what, what, are we thinking that he's trying to steal? So the same way we say, oh, the, uh, the employer never would transgress letting the wages go unpaid. So he's obviously telling the truth. Why don't we say the employee never would, would transgress the prohibition against stealing? So he's obviously telling the truth. So, Gabi Balabais, you got You know, there's two things that reinforce the position of the Balabais. Chadadim Balabais over Baltalin. One is that we, he won't transgress letting the wages sleep over. And also, it's wholly unlikely that Michael would have waited till daybreak. Okay, he wants his money. So the fact that he's first coming to me at daybreak and he didn't demand it during the night is more evidence that I'm telling the truth and not him. So if he demands it, you know, at 5 p.m. or at 7 p.m. or any time before daybreak, and then I deny it, then we say that he's, I'm distracted, he's believed, and he takes a shoe and he collects. But if he only demands it after daybreak, then, then the double chazaka, A, I wouldn't have transgressed not paying him overnight, and B, he wouldn't have waited that long, means that I'm believed and not him, and, I do not, and he does not get to take an oath. And presumably, I don't even have to take an oath. I just get to walk away. Two words to solve this. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Amar of Nachman, Amar Shmuel, Lo Shon This is only if uh, I hired Michael with witnesses, okay? And Michael can prove that I he did work for me. Avos Charo Shlo If Michael has no evidence that I even hired him to mow the lawn, and nobody saw him mow the lawn, he told So I could say to Michael, because I could say to him, hey, I never hired you. You're making it all up. You didn't mow the lawn for me. So He's mm-hmm. believed to say that he paid him, and he would, and therefore Michael doesn't get to make the oath. Tosel says, one minute, I thought we thought the Balabais was making an honest mistake. Okay, if you're making an honest mistake just because you have a Miko, that doesn't, right, that doesn't, the question, Amigo only works if you think you're consciously lying. If we think the Balabais is consciously lying, here he wouldn't consciously lie because you could just as easily say he never hired Michael. It's not clear how the fact that I could say that I never hired you helps if we think I'm making an honest mistake. Okay, so Tosus deals with that. But anyway, that's what Rav Nachman says, that if Michael has no witnesses that I hire him, and then I'm believed to say I paid him. Okay, so the Gemara says, I'm going to let you say I paid you. It's admitting that you must have hired him. Yes, but I, since I could have said I didn't hire you, then I'm believed when I said I hired you and I paid you. Okay, because I didn't have to admit that I hired you. I'm going to let you say he just did it out of his, uh, he just went ahead and did the work thinking that the guy No, no, no. I mean, that's a good question. Let's say there's no evidence that I hired him, but there's people w- are seeing him work on my field. Right? Can that will that be in implicit evidence that I hired him? Because as you said, no idiot goes and works on my field for nothing. That's a good question. That I don't know the answer to that. Okay, but let's assume there's no evidence to any of it. Okay, even though you're admitting that you know, the, the, right? Yeah, I'm admitting, but I could have denied it all. I'm a Rabbi Yitzchak Yasher Yasher Kayach. V'cheinam Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan said the same thing that it's only if there are witnesses that he hired him. So the says, Michlal, the plea yale, Reish Lakish. We we, we've we had this before. Why didn't you say Reb Yochanan and Reish Lakish? So does Reish Lakish disagree? No. Igadami Mishtahave Shasile, Bishasik. Reish Lakish was drinking something and he couldn't, and therefore he wasn't saying how he felt about it. He was in the middle of his coffee. Bishasik, like Igni or Igadami Mishtahave Shasile, Bishasik, that Reish Lakish was basically, you know, waiting um, to, to have Reb Yochanan. Uh, who, who, I'm trying to remember who was this that was waiting? Um, well, Rachel wasn't saying anything, so he must have been waiting, right? Yeah, but wait, why was he late? Why was he waiting? So we had this in the Gemara before, right? He said he customarily waits for Rosh Rabbi Yochanan. To this is Rebbe, right? Yeah, but then, oh, and then and then after, while, while he was waiting for his Rebbe to finish, no, that's what I not meant, and how come he didn't know what he said after he waited? So it says by that time already, right, uh, one minute. 
let me just get to Rashi earlier. Right. So Reish Lakish was did say something, but he didn't get around to saying it. And by that time, Reb Yitzchak had left the base Medrash. Okay. So let's just read one more line. Itmar Nami, I'm Reb Menashe Bar Zvid, I'm a Rav. Lo shano le shescharo be'edim, only if he was hired with witnesses. I was chorus shelo be'edim, but without witnesses. Mitoshi yecholomalo lo scharticha me'alam. You could say I never hired you. The cholomalo scharticha me'nasati lechaz charecha. I hired you and I have paid. And I have paid. Okay, so what? That's the same thing. That's the same thing. It says Amar. Okay, so we will continue with this tomorrow. No, there's Amar Rab Menashe.